garage. This is no garage. Look at this workshop. Fantastic. Uh, well, thank you. Yeah, I love making things, building things, and yeah, cars don't come in here. This is my <laughs> workshop for sure. The issue, though, is, is weather. In the summertime, open the doors, turn on the fan, nice, cool, and comfortable. Wintertime in Akron, Ohio. Winter's in Akron. Yeah. A little brisk. Yes. You know, it can get really, really freezing, and it's no fun, you know, using, using, having to wear a parka while working on a table saw. Or the saw. gloves. And then the gloves, they're just awkward. Um, now, I always knew I wanted heat out here. A few years back when we were building our brick patio, I actually had a plumber run a gas line all the way out here and up into the attic. So it, it's in the building. Good, all right. So the gas line gives you some options. You know, we could go with a conventional furnace up in that attic above us, but that's gonna have duct work. It's gonna pull air up inside here. Now, anytime I have a workshop, I worry about all the sawdust that can get up and can clog the filter, oh. the heat exchanger, and the blower. Oh, that'd be bad. You also could look at a thing called a unit heater, and that's uh, gas or electric, but it blows air across a heat exchanger, and that can also clog. So what if I could get you something that didn't move the air at all? That'd be great. Awesome. All right, so here's how we're going to heat your garage slash workshop. <laughs> this is a gas-fired infrared heater, a radiant heater. All right, it has a gas valve right here. You can see there's a ceramic element right here, and this will glow and get really warm. What this heater does is it's going to heat objects. Now, we've seen these before. You've seen them in commercial warehouses, in restaurants, ca outdoor cafes. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. You also know radiant heating from the sun. We stand outside on a cold day, and we might be underneath the shade of a tree. You step out, and you feel different. You feel more comfortable because those rays have come and been absorbed by you. We want to do the same thing here. So this has an aperture that's going to, anything in its path is going to absorb energy into. So that means you, the table saw, any object, okay? So we've got to think about where we place it. Now, there's a couple of considerations. One is clearance to combustible objects. You know, we want to keep it far enough away from a ceiling or a wall, and there's a bracket for that. And the other is, where do you place it in the space to get maximum output? Conventional thinking is you might put it right here. Here's your workbench, and this is where you work most often. Right. But I'd really like to put it in the corner right here hang it from the bracket, and now that wide aperture will cover this entire space. It's going to go about 15 or 20 feet oh, that way, too. That would be All great. Right? Good. Let's get started. All right, so what I'd like you to do is to build a base that'll put the unit at 45 degrees from the corner. All right, here you go. Awesome. And that'll also help us with our clearance requirements. All right, are you happy? Yeah, go for it. Watch your fingers. Then we can mount the bracket and attach the heater. Okay. Yep, we're good. All right, let's pop the heater on. Awesome. Here we go. We want 14 inch clearance. Perfect. Beauty. I'm going to drill a hole up into the attic to allow the flexible gas line to be run down. All right, Chris, just feed it down, please, the flex. Thank you. With a tubing cutter, we can cut the flexible gas line to length, strip away the plastic outer coating, and make up our connection. This bracket and special fitting allows the connection between the flexible gas and our black steel pipe. When working with gas, it's important to use pipe dope for proper thread connection. On the far end of the garage, we're installing a vent, and that does a couple of things. It allows any excess moisture from the combustion process to get out of the building and allows for a little bit of combustion air to get in. All right, so we have fed a wire from the unit right to this location. Here's our thermostat right here. You can see the settings are here. They're relatively low. You can set this thing to 55 and still feel comfortable. Oh, okay? yeah. Now, this unit has a pilot in it, and that pilot, when it's burning, will generate enough electricity to operate the thermostat, but it also means you'll have heat even when you don't have power. Really? Wow, that's okay? cool. So, feel it? There it is. 
Now, it's a yep. hot summer day right here, so you're not going to appreciate that right now, but you will in Akron winter. You bet I will. Thank Have you so much. Have a warm winter. All right, my friend. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.